Jimmy McCullough. Good morning. Good morning. It's raining outside, but we're going to let the sun shine in here. Uh, got a few announcements. First of all, welcome. You know, whether you're here with us or online, we're glad to have you with us. Uh, and we just pray that you'll be blessed by being here today. We have a few announcements. We got a card from the Seal family. It says, Our thanks to you. And the card says, The extra special thank you note sent to you today holds more appreciation than any words can say. For you're among the nicest people we have ever known, and you'll never be forgotten for the thoughtfulness you, you've shown. And then Sharon wrote, Thank you for all your prayers, thoughts, texts, telephone calls, and other ways you remembered us and kept in touch with us with our family during this difficult time. You'll never know how much these acts mean until you experience the show of love this church gave to us. 
So that's Sharon, and Greg, Sean, Don, and, and family. Uh, we're going to have a Dickens meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. Next Sunday night, we'll have a business meeting. We have our Annie Armstrong mission offering still going on. We're, you know, our goal is $1,000, and Christine's not here today, so I don't know how much we have, but I know it was close last Sunday. Uh, we're still doing the today. If you'll complete down here, some pastor search committee surveys. You know, please complete that today and, and lay it back here on the table. Over here in Madonna, if you have any questions about what Madonna can tell you more about this, there's over here. There's a list of uh, our committees and church and the responsibilities and the responsibilities of them. And uh, we're in the process of reassigning committee members. You know, some people don't go to church anymore that was on these committees. And for whatever reason, some of the names that are on there, you know, they're not around anymore. But a list of committees and the committee responsibilities are listing over there. Look at them and let Mike or Madonna, somebody know if you'd like to continue to serve. And if you would like to serve on other committees, you know, we're trying to get people that want to serve and, and then activate these committees. Uh, next Sunday, no, is it next Sunday? No, two. two Sundays. May 16th is, gra is a graduate recognition Sunday. Uh, it's for kindergarten, sixth grade, seniors in college from a congregation will be recognized. Uh, Millie still need work nursery workers. If you'd be willing to serve, let her know. And uh, on her prayer list, on the back page of your bulletin there, we're still praying for the Whitsell family, Bobby Farley family, Brenda Griffin, uh, Juan L. Bradshaw, Imogene Wisnhunt, who is Julia's grandma, Marcy Story Harrison, uh, Brenda Griffin's nephew, I think his name is Jonathan Perron. Is that what it is? Perron? Okay. Is that the baby, right? Jackson? Okay. Uh, family of Faye Ashford, family of Steve Lights. Becky Rowland, who's a friend of Maria's, the family of John Sharp, uh, the Powell's mission trip to Romania this fall, Pastor Search Committee, and we're still praying for Miss Anna and her family. And uh, Jimmy McCullough, who is Jackie's brother, lost his wife. Is that right, Jackie? And her name was Rubin. Rubin. Okay, so we're still praying for them. Is there anything else y'all know that we need to pray for? Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, we just thank you for each and every one that's here this morning. We just lift all these names up on a prayer list and pray, pray that you'd be with them and, and bless each one in a special way. We just ask you to uh, be with Brother John as he brings a message to us this morning. And we pray that we'd listen to it and would respond to it, Lord, and we need to leave here as better Christians. Or if there's somebody here that's not saved, we just pray that today would be the day of their salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to have a pastor search committee meeting right after church this morning. Would you tune your hearts today? We're singing about lifting up the name of Jesus. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the
my King. In what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound. Yes, in your ear. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord, and I lift my voice to honor, to honor you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. That's beautiful. I love you, Lord, once again. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. From the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me. It's my soul's best songs, faithful service. Out of the angry waves, he's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved. appreciation for our accompanist on a regular basis, Miss Bobby Parker, uh, Stephen Tollett, and Madonna Hill. I appreciate them. They do what I cannot do, but every now and then I'm thrown into the furnace, and uh, hopefully we'll see the Son of Man standing there with him. But uh, the God's Word today in Psalm 63, verses 2 through 4. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, 
and in your name I will lift up my hands. Would you stand as we sing, To God be the glory, great things he has done. To God be the glory, great things he has done. people said. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
is good and I'm a glutton for punishment. It's our privilege today to have Kathy Gilbert and Kim Bennett to come and share a song. Uh, many of you uh, around my age grew up with this song, uh, El Shaddai. Would you all come and share this song? Come even now as we speak. There you are. In the children's department, we're about to start learning this summer about the names of God. So that's why I chose this song for us, uh, just to kind of kick it off a little bit. El Shaddai means God Almighty, so you know. <coughs>
Children's Church, Brittany. If you want to go with Brittany to Children's Church. Thank you for singing El Shaddai. I've not heard that in a while. I guess it's, uh, it's an old song by now, huh? But I like it. Uh, you know, the, the Jewish people, um, when I visited the Temple Institute in Jerusalem, they had the crown made for the high priest. And across the, the golden front of the crown are the words Kodesh Hashem. They call God the name they don't want to pronounce his name. They don't want to say it, lest they profane it in some way. They call him Hashem. And we know in the New Testament that God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess to the glory of God the Father. That's not what I'm preaching on, but it sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> it's good to be with you here today. How many of you glad to be here? Rather be here than have a root canal, right? <laughs> Amen. All right. I'm, I'm glad to see you in the Lord's house. I remember years ago, for many years, uh, Brother Clarence Shell was our Arkansas State Evangelism Director for the State Convention. Had him in revivals in numerous churches, and he's one of the sweetest men I know on the face of God's earth. And he'd always stand and look at the folks, and he'd say, Well, good morning, beloved. It's a delightful joy to be with you here today. I've heard him say that a jillion times in a jillion places. And it is a delightful joy to be here with you today. I swam over. Uh, it, was, it was kind of raining a little bit, but I'm one of those Baptists that rain doesn't scare. Okay, so it's good to be in the Lord's house with you. I'm excited to be here with you today. This is a, this is a high point for me and my week just to come be with you and spend some time with you in God's Word. The other night, I, I, I take a pre-bedtime nap. <laughs> Any of y'all, do I have a witness here? Yes, I do. Uh, I, I got, uh, you know, somebody said that all you have to do to go to sleep in a chair is be old and sit in a chair. <laughs> and I sat down in a chair and, and I... I was watching one of my favorite programs is uh, The Curse of Oak Island. I'm wanting those guys find that gold, okay? I've been with them for years. I want them to see them find that gold. I, I, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to stay in here and I'm going to watch this thing through. Not. Because <laughs> as soon as she left the room, I went off into dreamland somewhere or another. And I woke up. It, it had to be somewhere after three o'clock because that's when the infomercials kick in okay and all i remember hearing was this guy have you ever noticed on the infomercials all these guys yell at you well it's three in the morning they're going to yell at you okay and he goes comes with all you see here and what they did is they took the thing apart, whatever it was, and laid out all the pieces that comes with all you see here. They want to convince you you're getting a deal. Amen? Although some assembly is required and batteries are not included. Okay? I want to tell you that the Christian life came with more than we could possibly imagine. More than we could envision. Uh, I've often said this, and I believe it to be true. We get saved... We spend the rest of our life in discovery of what God gave us when He gave us Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that in the fullness, or in Him, did the fullness of all the Godhead dwell bodily. And so when I received Christ, I got a Father along with it. And I got the blessed Holy Spirit along with that. 
And I truly do believe that the moment you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside you. It's not a, it's not a separate operation because the Bible says if we do not have His Spirit, then we are none of His. So the Holy Spirit comes to live inside us, and none of us will live long enough, dearly beloved, to discover all there is to know about this wonderful thing called the Christian life, what it is to be a child of the living God. It's an amazing time of discovery. And my prayer is for each of us is that every day we will discover some new attribute, some new uh, part of His personality, uh, some new aspect of His grace and His mercy and His love for us. And that every day will be a day of discovery for us as we walk through this thing called the Christian life. Romans chapter 8 is one of my favorite chapters. I don't know how you pick one. <laughs> uh, certainly I've got a lot of favorite chapters, but Romans 8 has to be one of those that speaks to my heart so deeply. Uh, years ago, I think it was in 1977, Billy Graham came to Memphis and held a crusade there. And I went to his school of evangelism that he has along with his crusades for pastors. And Dr. R.G. Lee, who was pastor of the Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis for many, many years, was still living at that time, although he was in the closing days of his life. And he was, he was one of God's great preachers of that time. And Dr. Graham went to see Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee, of course, was at his home, and he was in bed, and it was not going to be long before he would go to be with the Lord. But Billy Graham asked him, he said, Dr. Lee, what's your favorite passage of Scripture? And Dr. Lee replied, how does one choose one diamond from a whole fistful of diamonds? But this is one of mine, and since I'm the preacher, I get to preach on it today, okay? Uh, it's Romans chapter 8. I'm not going to read the whole thing for the sake of time. I wish you would. It will bless you. But Romans 8 starts off with no condemnation. There, there is now, therefore, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And it ends, concludes, with no separation. What can separate us from the love of God? Not a thing in this world, not a thing in the world under this one, not a thing in the world above this one. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then scattered throughout the chapter are a plethora, that's a good word, isn't it? A plethora of things. And I'm certainly not going to, it's not going to be exhaustive here this morning. Uh, we're going to touch on some of these things. But these are things that belong to us. And you know, we go through life sometimes with such worry and care if we only knew what we had in Christ. We wouldn't worry near as much. We wouldn't fret near as much. Uh, we, we wouldn't get all, the, all, all bundled up, be a bundle of nerves about things because, folks, we serve a great God. And the longer we live, I think the more opportunity we have to discover just how great, how wonderful, how marvelous our God truly, truly is. It says there in chapter 8 and verse 1, and I will read, begin reading there, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now after that, the first thing that I want to say is this. In verse 2 it says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. One of the things that is ours because of Christ is that He has come into our lives and He has forever, if we will cooperate with Him and walk in, in His will, He has forever broken the power of sin over our lives. I love the words of the old hymn that says, He breaks the power of canceled sin. He sets the prisoner free. His word can make the foulest clean. His blood avails for me. How wonderful that is to see someone who is in bondage have the power of that bondage over their life 
broken by the power of God. And to see that person freed from the captivity of it. And the truth of the matter is, every one of us in here today who names the name of Jesus as Savior, we have had that happen in our lives. Christ broke us free from what had us in bondage. And it feels so good to be free, doesn't it? It really, really does. I deal with a lot of people uh, as pastor for many, many years. Uh, when you're in a community for 31 years like I was as pastor, you become not just pastor of your church, you become pastor of the whole town. And uh, literally that's kind of what happened there. And now that I'm still there, they can't get me to, get me to move. You know, I moved two whole blocks. <laughs> so I'm still there. And I'm in the mayor's office there in, in Amity. And I'm always out and around and, and so forth. And there are people who still come to me and say, I mean, I've got this problem or I've got a son that's on this. I've got a daughter that's bound up in this and a bad relationship. What can I do? And I say, well, I, I only know the one to point you to. I don't know of anything we can do, but I know of something or someone who can do something. And his name is Jesus. And he can set the prisoner free. He can break the power of that sin in our lives. I'm so, uh, so disturbed. Uh, in our community, we have a tremendous crystal meth amphetamine problem. I remember right after 9-11, I was uh, awakened one morning about four o'clock. All the lights were on in our, what was then our brand new city hall, uh, just a half a block from my house. And I could see figures in there moving around and most of them were in uniform, police officers' uniforms of one description or another. I heard helicopters and I heard police vehicles and they blocked off every exit out of Amity and executed 54 arrest warrants in one morning. Re greatly reduced our population uh, pretty quick. Crystal meth, amphetamine. And uh, we're back right where we started from. Most of those people are out still doing what they were doing. And I'll tell you what, they'll probably be doing that forevermore until someone named Jesus intervenes in their lives. He breaks the power of canceled sin, ladies and gentlemen. Those who are bound can be free from the law of sin and death. And that's a message that a lot of people need to hear in our day. They need to hear there is hope, but the hope is not in some program of man. The hope is not in some, some uh, document that I sign or oath that I take or anything else. It is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ who can make the foulest clean. Another thing that I want to point out to us this morning is contained in verse 8 and verse 9. So then we who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. We have imparted to us the blessed Holy Spirit of God. And I tell you what, I'm one of those guys, I believe in Him very strongly, and I feel His presence very near me all the time. He's the guy that keeps me from saying what I want to say most of the time. Now don't look smug and sanctimonious at me. Y'all do the same thing. Amen? You started to say it, and somewhere deep in your heart, God pricks your heart and says, Child of mine, that's not what you need to be saying. He has saved me on many occasions from making a fool out of myself. He is the one who gets hold of me when I get a little bit of an attitude. Nobody else in here gets an attitude, do they? I was in Walmart yesterday. That's not my happy place. We were in Arkadelphia. And, uh, you know, the joy is when you go to Walmart, you get to see people. And I had seen a couple of people that I had pastored many years earlier and had a good time of fellowship with them. Uh, my wife and I had gotten separated in Walmart and she wasn't answering her cell phone. I think she was, knew it was me. And I, all I wanted to say is, where are you and stay there till I can find you. Uh, that doesn't work out too well. 
And then we got into one of those aisles where people were visiting with each other. And if you notice the aisles in Walmart are narrower than they used to be. You can't get around them. And they, when they're talking to each other, they are oblivious to your presence. They don't know you're there. And you can stand there and go, you can sigh all you want to. <sighs> and they just look at you and like, just deal with it. Okay? Um, she got on to me for doing what I did. <clears throat> I coughed a couple of times and I said, you know what? I shouldn't have made that trip to China two weeks ago. They moved. But you know what? The Holy Spirit wouldn't let me even enjoy that. Aren't you glad He's with you? You know what the Holy Spirit does? He keeps us from being us. Right out there in front of everybody. He keeps us in the bounds of being godly. Aren't you glad He does? He is our teacher. You know, the Holy Spirit in the New Testament... In the Gospels, he's called the pneumatos, the breath of life. In the epistles and, and beyond, he is called the paraclete, the one who stands beside us and encourages us and helps us. I am so glad we have the blessed Holy Spirit of God. God didn't say, all right, now here's a bunch of rules and regulations I want you to follow, and y'all just go do the best that you possibly can. Well, my best is not good enough, I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen. But let me tell you, we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit to live a life that you and I couldn't live. We have, had, we have His blessed presence living inside us. And I am so glad, I am so glad that He is the one who, who speaks to my heart. He is the one who assures me of the presence of God. He is the one that reminds me of who I am in Christ Jesus. He is the one that keeps me out of trouble. I'm so glad we have the blessed one, the Holy Spirit of God living inside us, and the gift just keeps on giving. In verse 14... The Scripture says this, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, saying, Abba, Father. Because of the Holy Spirit, we don't have to be afraid. You know, there are a lot of people who are afraid in this world, fearful of things, possessed by fears, worried about what might happen. If you worry about what might happen, ladies and gentlemen, you won't ever get any sleep because we don't know what's going to happen in this crazy world. What you have to be reminded of is the one who takes care of you while you are sleeping and the one who keeps an eye on you while you're awake. And the one who has all of this in the hollow of his hand, and I'm assured of this one thing, and it's, it just gets, ooh, it gets good. I'm assured of this one thing. If God allows it to get to me, then he's going to give me the grace to get through it, whatever it might be. And he allowed it in my life for a divine purpose and that is to refine me and to make me into more of what I need to be. See, God, what God's doing is He's still busy trying to chip off everything in our life that doesn't look like Jesus. I heard a story of a sculptor that got this really weird looking block of marble in his studio. And his friend came over and walked around it several times. And he said, this is really a strange block of stone, what are you going to do with it? He said, I'm going to carve a horse. He walked around it a couple of more times. He said, how are you going to get a horse out of that? And he said, it's real easy. I'm going to take my hammer and I'm, my chisel and I'm going to walk around and I'm going to knock off everything that doesn't look like a horse. <laughs> you know what God is in the process of doing by 
the situations, circumstances, and things that come across the threshold of our lives as He's knocking off everything that doesn't resemble Jesus so we can be produced in the image of His only begotten Son. Isn't, we're still a, a work in progress. And I know God's not done with me yet because I think He's got the rasp out right now. And He's really going to town. But let me tell you, we don't need to fear. We don't need to fear. Uh, my goodness gracious folks, my God, your God is so great. When I was pastoring in El Dorado, we had a school at our church and we brought all the kids in on Wednesday morning for chapel. And the little ones, they liked to sing, you know, so they, they wanted Brother John to sing. And this one little old boy couldn't say preacher, he called me creature. He'd always raise his chubby little hand and he'd say, Creature, can we sing that God is so big song? So we'd sing, My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. The mountains are his. The valleys are his. The stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. And I was walking out of that service one morning and it occurred to me, that's a simple little children's song, but do I get it? I got it. It's all right. And like the psalmist said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you, Lord, are with me. Isn't that good? He gives us the assurance of His presence. In verse 16, it says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I are heirs, joint heirs with Jesus Christ to everything that pertains to God. Everything that pertains to Him. All the glorious things that pertain to Him. I told you about 10 months ago we moved out of a much bigger house into a much smaller house, downsizing. And I had to get rid of a bunch of stuff. And I'm one of these guys, I'm not a hoarder. I'm a peculiar collector. Okay? Okay. And I had all this stuff as uh, the only living male grandchild on one side of the family. I got all the guy stuff, you know, all the guns and, and things like that that passed down. And, and uh, I got to looking at all that stuff, and we didn't buy a house big enough for all that stuff. I don't even, my little, my little man cave in the backyard, that's for my choice stuff. But it's not big enough for all that. So I started giving all that stuff away. And I gave away guns. And I gave away heirloom furniture and stuff like that to my daughter and to my sons. and As much as my grandkids would take. Uh, I found when I cleaned out my mother's house, she had 38 quilts that she had made. I gave away quilts. I'm running out of relatives <laughs> to give away quilts to. And I thought, you know what? All that stuff, and, and uh, when I was setting up my, my, my building out back with all my collectibles, it won't mean anything. To, today's treasures are tomorrow's yard sales. Okay? That's pretty much the way it is. Nathan said, Son, Dad, what are you going to do with all this stuff? I said, ain't my problem from here on out. I got one more move, and that's the glory. I said... Y'all going to be dealing with this. Merry Christmas. This stuff of this earth doesn't mean a thing. It really doesn't, ladies and gentlemen. But I am an heir of God. I'm an heir of salvation, purchased of God, been born of His Spirit, and I'm washed in His blood. Woo! Everything that pertains to God... Everything that belongs to Him is mine in Christ Jesus. How glorious is that? We are heirs with Him. 
In verse 26, it says this, Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. Aren't you glad of that? It says we don't know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with unutterable groanings. You ever been to that place in your life, and I know you probably have if you've lived long enough, where you went to God but you didn't have anything to say? All you could do was just groan in your spirit. You've been there, haven't you? A place of deep, deep sorrow. But you know what? God hears. God hears. You know, my, 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 my kids come to me now and they're all, my oldest one's 41. Ooh, yeah, he is. He's 41 and 39 and two of them that are 37. And they're big old, big old boys, you know. Anywhere from six, seven on down, you know, and and mm, they took after me. Okay, they're they're big old guys. My sweet daughter, and they can come to me, and I can take one look at them, and I know what's on their hearts. I know they're broken, and I'll grab those old boys, and we'll just hug up, and we'll just bawl and squall, and it's all right to bawl and squall. Especially when somebody bigger than you is bawling and squalling that you're holding on to. Amen? They don't have to say a word. We don't have to say a word with God. He knows the heart. He takes what's on the inside of us and He expresses it to God. The Bible says we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And you know what? What we can't utter, He's expressing to God on our behalf. And he's saying, oh, Father, oh, John down there, he's breaking. His heart is torn out by the roots. He's, he's dying on the inside. Father, would you bless him? It won't be long before the blessing will come. There it'll be. He makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In verse 28 it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to those who are called according to His purpose. Not everything that happens to us in life is good, but it works toward the good. One of my buddies that I know real well was in college. I married him and his wife, and he was in my wedding, and we'd just been friends all these years. Was a salesman for Zales Corporation. Uh, he could always sell an Eskimo refrigerator. I mean, he was one of those kind of guys that could. And it wasn't very long. This was back in, in uh, the early 80s. He was, he, was, he was making six figures back then. That was, that was a lot of money. And he was going to catch a plane out of New York to fly to Washington, D.C. And he got caught in a New York traffic jam in a New York taxi cab. He said, that is not my happy place. And he was fussing and fuming because he was one of these guys. He was punctual. I've got my ticket. I need to be on that plane. I've got a meeting with so-and-so down in Washington. I've got to do this. And he missed his plane. He said, man, I was fussing. Man, I was carrying on. Until he found out that that plane had clipped a bridge and gone down in the Potomac River and killed nearly all the people on board that flight. And he said, I had a seat right over the wing where that plane would have broken in two. And he said, I learned very quickly not to fuss when something doesn't go exactly the way that I want it to go because I know the one who sees the bigger picture than I do. You know, life is like a, like, a, like a movie, and every little second is the individual frames. Remember the old 16 millimeter projectors that we had in school? We had one when I was going to school that came over on Noah's Ark. It was no bell and howl, and we'd get those films in. That meant you got to get, old, get out of class to go to the projection room so you could watch. And inevitably, what would happen? Those films would break, wouldn't they? 
and the teacher would get over there with some scotch tape and, you know, tape that thing back together, rewind that thing, and here you'd go again. All those movies that came on spools this big were made up of little individual still shots. And you and I are living in this little still shot right here. And we can't see what the outcome of the film is going to be. But we know the one who knows the outcome of the film. And he's orchestrating your life and mine to meet the needs of what we're going to face, even though we don't know we're going to face it. Oh, what a God. What a God. He's got it all in the hollow of His hand. In verse 31, it says this, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? My goodness. He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? You know, I, I love my boys. I had to stand and say goodbye several times to one of them as he went off to war. And there's probably nothing in the world ripped my heart out more than that. If something had happened to that son of mine while he was over there, I, I gave him to serve his country, I, my heart said, Lord, I, I give my son to you. If something had happened to him, somebody said, well, you gave your son, so can I have his truck? <laughs> can I have his tools? Can I have, can I have that gun of his? If I'd give my son for you, I'd give you anything that belonged to him. I would. Christ came and gave himself for us. God gave his son for us. He said, if he did not spare his own life, but freely gave him, will he not also freely give us all things? But let me tell you where the real blessings are. The real, the real blessings are not the material stuff. Okay? Because we even pray for the wrong stuff that way. I wonder how many of you old boys out there prayed for the wrong girl when you were dating. You're scared to even grin, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad God didn't answer some of my prayers. How about y'all? You young, you, you young ladies of all ages out there, aren't you glad God didn't give you some of them old boys you prayed for? Y'all not going to commit yourself in any way, are you? But I know how it is. I heard Bailey Smith tell this story on himself one time. He was a boy growing up in Dallas. Bailey, for, for many years, was pastor of First Southern Baptist Church in Dell City, Oklahoma, past president of the Southern Baptist Convention, and after he retired, he went into evangelism for many, many years until God called him home. He said uh, there were several kids in his family, and he said we were on the, the lower end of the middle class. He said we had, we had what we needed, but we just didn't have any extra. And he said, more than anything else, I wanted a bicycle. He said, I had a bicycle, but he said, I'd rummaged around in junk piles and so forth, and I'd gotten a front fork over here and a and, and, and back fender over here and, and some pedals over here. He said, it was a hybrid bicycle. It was several different colors and, and different brands and everything else. And he said, my dad came to me one day and said, son, you want to go with me down to Otasco? That, that dates some of us, doesn't it? I liked Oklahoma Tire and Supply. That was a good store. And he said, well, sure. And he said they, they, they hopped in their old coop and went down there. And he said, Dad went back to the back to deal with the man, manager of the store, about something. And he said, I got to looking at all the bicycle stuff. And they had all kinds of things that you could snazz up your bicycle with. He found a pair of those hand grips with the tassels coming out of them. How many of y'all remember those? Now that was a deal. That was almost as good as putting a, putting a playing card in your spokes and pretending like you had a motorcycle. Okay? He found a set of those and they were a dollar. They were in one of those plastic bags, you know, hung up on a rack. And he pulled them down and he came back there and he tugged on his daddy's shirt and he said, Daddy, I found these. Can I have them? He said, no, Bailey, not today. 
He said, but dad, they're only a dollar. He said, Bailey, I told you to go put them back, son. Go put them back. And he, you ever know, not too many kids take no for an answer the first time. He said, but dad, my old bicycle doesn't have hand grips. What if my hands get sweaty and my hands slip off my handlebars and I have a wreck and I break my neck? Won't you be sorry? And that's when his daddy used his middle name. You get your middle name used, you're in trouble. Bailey Eugene, I told you to go put those things up. He said, I did. I stomped back there. I put them up. He said, going home, I sold up like an old toad frog. I wouldn't look at my daddy. I was looking out the window. I wouldn't answer my daddy. I was mad. He wouldn't let me have my hand grips. That was on a, about the middle of the week. Well, Bailey went on. Life does go on without hand grips, you know. Monday, he came home from school. It was his birthday. He noticed that they had company. All of his aunts and uncles were at the house and his cousins, and brothers and sisters and everybody. And he said he walked into the, to the living room and he said, there was a great old big cake with my name on it, you know. And he said, and I looked over there in the corner and with a big old bow on it was a brand spanking new Western Flyer bicycle. Now some of y'all know that was one that was tip top. That was good stuff right there. And uh, he said, I kind of did a double take. He said, I couldn't even dream that that was mine. And uh, he kind of eased over there. There was a label taped to the seat. And it said, Happy Birthday, Bailey, on it. And he said, You mean this is mine? He said, Yes. He said, Son, you know the other day when you pitched such a fit? Don't you love it when your parents remind you when you pitch fits? <laughs> Remember when you pitched such a... There, in fact, it was probably a hissy fit. Nowhere but in Arkansas do we have degrees there's, there's a fit, there's a hissy fit, and then there's a wall-eyed hissy fit that's above that. He pitched at least a hissy fit. Remember when you were all mad the other day because I wouldn't let you have those hand grips? Yes, sir. I was back there ordering this bicycle for you, son. He said, you need to understand this and remember, sometimes God says no so He can say yes to something a whole lot better. Folks, you realize how much the Lord loves you? I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you this. I don't think you can. I can't either. Because God's the only one who can understand the love that He loves with. But it is a selfless love. It is a giving love. And one of the things He wants us to know is His people. is just how blessed we are. We have everything in Christ we need everything, everything, every need is supplied in Him. And I want you to understand that, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, always, this morning, if you don't know Christ, I sure do want you to know Him. God wants you to know Him. God wants you to receive Christ into your life as Savior and Lord of who you are. And have Him forgive you of your sin. Set you free from that which binds you. And give you new life and new hope in Him. And dear Christian, let's don't walk around like we're paupers. Let's don't. Yesterday, one of my boys, Stephen, he's a, they're all clowns. He sent me a picture. This guy with a big old mustache, wearing a crown and one of those big old royal robes, and up above it, it said, Mayor John McAnally. <laughs> and I was going, yeah. But it, I, I don't feel that way because I'm the mayor. 
You can take that and get a cup of coffee for a dollar all day long at Trudy's. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. Everything that is his is mine by royal, to royal inheritance. I'm a joint heir with Christ to everything that pertains to God. And I refuse, I absolutely refuse to live my life as a pauper when I got everything in the world that I need. Amen? Amen. Folks, let's live rich lives. I'm not talking about rich as far as the world's concerned. I don't, I don't care what kind of car I drive as long as it gets me from point A to point B and back again. I don't care about the clothes. I go to the closet anymore to see what fits. Well, amen. amen. Man, you know, I don't worry about my hair. What hair? That one? No. That's not a big deal. I got all my, my name is on all these accounts up at the bank because I'm a check signer for the city, you know, about a dozen accounts up there. And I go to put something in my account and these little old gals are so confused. They go, which one? I said, the one that ain't got nothing in it. I don't have to give you the last four numbers of my account. It's one that ain't got nothing. That's all right. It's Okay. I've got what I need for time and eternity all in the person of Jesus Christ. Oh, won't you know Him? And if you know Him, won't you love Him and serve Him? Won't you? Let's pray. Our Father, I stand amazed at who You are. I stand amazed that You could love a sinner like me I stand amazed that you could give your only begotten Son to redeem those who were not your friends but your enemies. Those who were separated from you by a barrier of sin. And you've chosen to love us in this way. And Lord, your love is extravagant. You give us exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And every need of our life is surely supplied in You. I would pray today, Father, for anyone in this place that may not know Christ as Savior, I would ask that this would be the day, the moment, the hour, that they would receive the free gift of salvation that is offered in Jesus Christ. And I pray for those of us who are believers that we'll not buy into what the enemy tells us, but Lord, that we'll understand just how rich, just how blessed, just how glorious it is to be a child of the Most High God. Every need we have is supplied in You. So I ask, Father, today that Your blessed Holy Spirit will speak here this morning. Speak to the lost and draw them to Yourself. Speak to the saved and convince them of their amazing standing in Christ Jesus in you. Lord God, speak today. May your blessed will be done. And we lift it up to you this morning, Father, in the precious and lovely name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's stand together, please.